smoke. Huge. I only got that shit started up right. One day I'm gonna have a bone in my nose. I'm gonna look a white man in the face with a bone in my nose. It's gonna be the best day of my life. <laughs> Alright. Um, I gotta do the third principle. I gotta do the third principle of um masculine medicine. To me, in retrospect, you know, maybe it's just because I'm the one who put them out. Um, this third principle of masculine medicine, I think, is is the easiest to understand. Um, but what I find is generally guys get this one last. Like the weight of it sort of hits them all at once. And I get that. I get that. That makes sense. Um, but either way, either way, because I'm sitting here thinking about it, and I'm like, what can I say I haven't said, or I need to say it a different way that can really grasp the the the, the gravity of this without making it seem daunting. So the third principle of masculine medicine. Remember, there's a theory and a practice side the theory side let's talks about what the fuck it is we're doing what it is what what the meaning of the whole principle is the practice side is okay well how do i do that saying you get to say the theory side okay how do i do that how do i do this practice the third principle the theory side is this is your life this is your life Put simply, put simply, in the relationship game, <laughs> what women are bartering is an opportunity to be in or with their body. That's what a guy wants right off the bat. Um, not to say that's all they want, but that's what they want first. Shit. Uh, and it's not our personality. It's not a, a factor of our personality. It's a factor of what we are, not who we are. Them girls would be upset thinking dude is inauthentic because he wants sex, but that's what we want. So in the relationship game, like I said, women barter an opportunity to be in or with their body. Fair play, fair play. But as males, what you're bartering is a piece of your life. And okay, you may think immediately, oh, he's being he's being dramatic. Follow me. Follow me, okay? This is okay, how do you how do you advertise yourself to a woman? You make your body look nice, okay, yeah, you can get that. You can get your money, muscles, and game up. But what do what do money, muscles, and games say? What do these things convey? to somebody you convey a statement about your life itself see a pair of nice titties doesn't compare doesn't convey an idea about the person's life a nice wig on with the little you know the crunchy part you know where they got the thing like that that don't convey about your life you can buy that at the store the signals men give off are about our life or about who we are. See, men are usually only interested at first in what a woman is. So who she is don't necessarily matter. What she is is what you're looking at. I can I can hear it in my head. You know this. This isn't that serious. Um, you know, just everybody love and be honest, and it's gonna work out. And you know what? If niggas did that, you'd be you'd be on point. You'd be on point. But motherfuckers don't do that. And I don't even think motherfuckers are supposed to do that. Just be honest and love everybody. I don't even think you can do that. But, you know, neither here nor there. It's not like anybody would debate it. Um, Most motherfuckers don't understand this until 
they're on their way out until they got a baby and shit's going crazy till they in a marriage and shit's going crazy. They getting all their assets taken. Good look, you come in flashing your money. That's what a motherfucker coming for in that divorce. <laughs> look, ain't nobody taking titties in the divorce. She get to keep the motherfuckers. <laughs> That's funny. Well, it's funny, but I'm serious, okay? It's funny, but I'm serious. Don't nobody put dudes on game to the fact that you're bartering your life until it's time to cash out on that motherfucker. Not only that, but everyone's going to blame you. And to a certain degree, they're going to be right but for, for the wrong reasons. They're going to be right but for the wrong reasons. This is your life that you play with. Like I tell dudes, man, as soon as the nut come out your dick, you don't have no options. As soon as it leaves your dick, you don't have any options. Well, you can put some hot sauce in the condom. You can pull a drape. You can pull a drizzy, right? Like, oh, my God. Why would you do that? Just trust a woman. Well, if he'd have just trusted her, she'd have had that thing in her. And it's not to say who's a good person, who's a bad person, what's right, what you should or should do. I don't care. You, look, you decide what you should or shouldn't do. The fact is, I'm just a messenger. The fact is, this is your life that you barter. This is your life that you barter. Not just an opportunity with, with your body. See, that's what we like to think. You know, I get that from you. You get that from me. Mm -mm. That's not what it's going to be. So that's the first thing. That's the theory side. And... and Sometimes it does take a while for the gravity of that to hit. That's the theory side. The practice side, okay? Remember, theory and practice. How do I do this? How do I implement this in my life? Be righteously honest. That sounds simple enough, but it's not. I think this is probably the first place dudes want to be risking taking it out. Because if, if motherfuckers in your life and they need you to be lying to them, they don't give a fuck about your life. They give a fuck about how they feel. But not that's good or bad. That is what it is. If, if they're in your life and they need you to lie in order to be able to stay in your life, they don't give a fuck about your life. They don't give a fuck about your life. And, and at the very least, out of any and everybody, you need to. You need to. It sounds nice to think that we should all care for each other. I get that. I get that. That makes it simple. And all you got to do is go out and start, you know, sacrificing yourself. And you're supposed to get that type of reciprocity. That sounds easy, but that's not the case. That's not the case. You're going to get used. And real shit, if you, if you can't be used, you're useless. If you can't be used, you're useless. So it's not a, 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 a shot at you that you're being used. It's a compliment. You can't be used, you're useless. So you're going to be used. It's, it's nice to think there's supposed to be some type of reciprocity. But but that's, that's a bit of a game, okay? So the practice is be righteously honest. Be righteously honest. And these aren't just words. The word righteous is characterizing the type of honesty. It's an adjective here righteously honest okay honest you want to move authentically not for somebody else but for you it needs to be a way of life a way that you practice being there's a lot of there's a whole analogy of of men being sharks who taking their teeth out this is where you edit yourself you edit what you would say what you really feel what you really want to what want to move by in order to spare somebody else's feelings or opinions this is where you sell yourself short at the expectation that there's going to be some type of reciprocity. And look, whether or not there is it, I think it's kind of beside the point. It's about you. This is your life. This is nobody else's life. No one, everybody can give you advice on it, but at the end of the day, you have to live it. See, that's why I'm not going to tell you what you should or shouldn't do, because that's up to you. This is your life. All the little snickers, all the all the down, you know, looking down on you from here over there, all that shit, 
beside the point. The point is you and your life. Your life matters. Not to inspire you, not to say you're special, but your life matters to you. And so you have to be willing to fight for it. So, you know, when girls will, will, will try you, you know, come at you, fight you about what you say, and then you kind of let that shit go. How that translates emotionally is this motherfucker don't isn't going to fight for what they believe in. This motherfucker ain't going to fight for their life because I can beat them. You got to be willing to fight for what you want in your life. And if you don't know what you want in your life, you already losing. <clears throat> well, if you if you're under thirty, bro, if you're under thirty, because because men take a while to pop. If you're under thirty, you it's it, fair play, fair play. You don't know. Take the time to figure it out. <clears throat> but there's the honest part. First and foremost, be honest, even at the risk of upsetting people. Even at the risk of upsetting people. Because those people who get upset don't have to live, don't have to walk in your shoes, in your shoes. Be honest. Because you have to cultivate a lie, bro. You got to take care of a lie. You got to nurture it, you know, make sure you're keeping it up to date, figure out who you told, what part of it you told to different people. That's a lot of work. That's a lot of work. And you know, fair play, once again, not telling you what you should do. If you can do that, by all means, go ahead, bro. I, I, ain't, got the, I ain't got the energy. I ain't got enough shit I gotta contend with. I don't wanna keep I don't wanna I don't wanna babysit a lie. I'd rather I'd rather be honest and authentic out the gate and build off of that. So the honesty is the first part. And it's not for anybody else. It's for you. It's for you. It's less to work on. The righteous part. Alright this is where the passion comes in. This is where the force behind your honesty comes in. Because you trying to be forceful with a lie? You ever seen somebody strong and wrong? You ever seen somebody strong and wrong? That's what happens. Because a lie can always be disrupted by the appropriate truth. The truth can't be disrupted by the appropriate truth. It's already the truth. It's already honesty. Now, the righteous part comes in where you're not, you're not being forceful with your honesty in a way to defeat the person. You want to consistently stay open to the idea that you could be wrong. That righteousness comes from the consistent pursuit to find holes in your own honesty to find places where what it is you the perspective you're coming from can be better and so if you're being honest with somebody and they give you a, they hit you back with something and it, and it works a little better to be completely honest well shit good 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 fair play fair play thank you thank you i'm gonna take i'm gonna take some of that i'm gonna take some of that no need for the no need for passion or push on that. But when you honest about what you what's what's going on with you, when you know that you're right, because you've tried it, you've you've tried to to test what you're being right. This is what I mean. When you're looking around, you honestly looking for the holes in your shit, and you keep updating it. You're you're consistently looking for the honesty in the conversation. You're not looking to prove your point. Your point will prove itself when it's right. Your point will prove itself when it's true. You don't, so you don't have to fight to do that. See, motherfuckers who got to build their shit on a the lie, they have to fight to maintain their honesty or the appearance of it. When you're honest, when you're true, you don't, you don't need to fight to do it. Now, what you're going to have to fight to do is, is to keep your position. Because motherfuckers who, don't, who would rather you have a different position that's more beneficial for them, they're going to push you. They're going to fight. They're willing to fight. <laughs> you got to be willing to fight for, for your position, your frame. Not because it's the right one. It's right for you. It's your shit. And that don't mean be close-minded to any and everything. Because some people, look, there's, there's a thing about being open-minded. When you're open-minded and you don't have your own point of view, anything can sway you. All right? People who don't have their own point of view and they're close-minded fight everything everything looks like an attack because they can't be stable because they don't have their own point of view you want your own point of view this what this is what i talk about with the building the philosophy around what it is you believe why you do what you do it, it starts to develop your own point of view that way you can be open-minded and you can take other people's stuff in without it 
taking you down the river. You can entertain other ideas because you always have one to come back to. And it's not something you built off of how you feel, what you want to be the case. It's what you built off of based on based on facts, regardless of what you'd like it to be. So you can always come back to that little boat and you can entertain the hell out of anybody else's idea. This is how you go out there and you find places where there was a hole in your ideas. You find new information that can update your philosophy. You start on the foundation of being righteously honest. Because if you start on that lie, you not only have to cultivate the lie, you have to cultivate your philosophy with the lie. And at any time, that whole thing can come crumbling down. That whole thing will come crumbling down. And this is your life. This is your life. See, it's not about doing this so somebody else will do this and that. It's not doing this for somebody else. It's strictly for you. The airplane, right? The airplane, a little mask analogy, right? So you put your mask on before you try and help somebody else. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> Make sure you are stable. If you're going to lead something, how are you going to lead unstable? If you're going to be the direction, the head of something, you can't do that unstable. When something's head is unstable, the rest of the body fucked up. That's in, that's not no catchy aphorism. aphorism. That's, like, that's like real shit. That's like real shit. So I don't have to fight for it. You can see that you can see an example of that anywhere. The head is fucked up. Everything else is fucked up. Because everything else follow the head. So the, the theory side. This is your life. You really have to embrace being your own. Uh, what's the word? How do I say it? Um, being your own. Not necessarily center of thought, but your own premises of thinking. Thinking for you should start. What, what's going to be good for me? What do I need? What what am I building? All right. That's where your center needs to start. Like, like for me, um, ugh, the title of the philosophy I use um, is happiness through husbandry. OK, happiness not being something that's evergreen. All right. Look up the word husbandry. All right. It's the care of livestock. A farmer is a husband of not just the livestock, but the crop and the entire farm itself. OK, it's an art to it. It's a work to that shit. All right. So that's what I talk about. Happiness through husbandry. I treat happiness like a crop, like a plant. You know, every now and then you'll find a nice little patch growing out in the woods somewhere. OK, cool. Great job. You lucked up on a little bit. No, it's not a bad thing. But. <clears throat> everything's coming to eat that everything want to find some happiness and so if you start to figure out what that is for you and how to cultivate it you start your farm that way you figure out what's the method to cultivate happiness for me is it uh is it going to the gym you know you, you maybe you, do, you lift the weights or you do the boxing gym is it making sure you have time to, to sit around and be quiet every now and then and do nothing oh uh, i love doing nothing um is it making sure that you know, you out here making a certain kind of money. Maybe that's happiness for you. I can't tell you what it's supposed to be, but I can tell you whatever it is you find that it is, learn to cultivate it. Because happiness ain't evergreen. It don't just grow by itself like that out here. Learn to cultivate it just like you cultivate a crop. OK, once you learn how to make happiness for yourself. Then that's when you bring on other livestock on the farm. This is when you go get your goat, okay? Or your cow with a nice hanging other titty. And yeah, right? Got the heavy titty on it, right? That's when you go get that. And, and how does that work for a husband? How does that work for a farmer, right? The farmer has to know the cow better than the cow knows the cow in order for that shit to be effective. And so the farmer goes to bring the cow on the, uh, on the farm, right? And the cow pushing against the fence. You supposed to already know that's what it's going to do. So you build the fence set up for that. You already set off a certain part of your area for the cow to stay. Because you let the cow do it, the cow just going to eat up all the happiness. It don't know the difference. And it's not supposed to. The, the farmer's supposed to know the difference. You set, that, you set that shit up for the cow in ways the cow didn't even know it needs. You can open the gate. That motherfucker ain't going nowhere. You can open the gate. That motherfucker ain't going nowhere. It could be simple as that, but the devil's in the details. I won't even lie to you. But that's happiness through husbandry. Because these motherfuckers, they say they want a husband. What they want is a daddy. And you gotta, you have to know these things better than they know this shit. 
before they even come around. You have to know that shit. You got like you like with the dog whisper. He don't train the dog. He trained the people. Because the people are out of, out of sync. The people don't understand what the fuck they're doing. Same difference, bro. You can't blame the woman for doing what they do naturally. You have to know what they do, why they do, and even know how to explain it back to them. Levels of logic. I, I highly suggest you check the Timeless Knowledge Store out. Not because I'm going to get clicks and engagement. Look, you can watch the whole thing. Won't no ads pop up. You know why? Because I don't make no money off of that. Right? So you click and you click and your shit that ain't valuable. Well, I think the like works for the algorithm, so you can do that. But I'm not making no money off of that. I'm not making no money off of that. Mm-mm. But you, your clicks and engagement, your precious clicks and engagement, uh-uh. Think, learn. Learn. Take your time. Chew on it. Especially if you're under 30. Take your time and chew on it. Because I tell you what, didn't nobody give me the game. He didn't give my father the game or his father. None of the men who was in my family got it. They probably didn't have it to give. So fair play. <clears throat> Nobody's coming to help you. No one's coming to help you. You sign that that marriage license with the state. No one's coming to help you. You 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 that nut leave your dick because you thought you was just having fun after the club. No one's coming to help you. They're all coming to get their peace. They all coming to get their peace. And I'm not saying it should be another way. I'm not saying it should be another way. This is your life. This is your life. And you're going to find that out when motherfuckers come for a piece of it. When you out here and you cultivating happiness, you got a whole farm, rows of plants, and motherfuckers ain't got no happiness, or they coming for it. Not because they shouldn't. Look, you got a farm. Motherfucking animals coming for your crop. It's not because they shouldn't. You got your little tomatoes, your little strawberries. Here come the birds. Here come the squirrels. The motherfuckers that want to come get a little bit, don't want to have to cultivate none. I'm going to come. I'm going to grab it. I'm going to sneak in and run. That's how they do it. It's supposed to be. It's nature. But you got to set that up. That's why the farmer put his little scarecrow out there, right? Because he already know what them little motherfucking thieving ass animals going to do. <clears throat> it's not the animal's responsibility not to steal. Not to come and take what you got. It's your responsibility to know the playing field, to know how that works. That's part of cultivating your happiness. You have to know what's, what's going to be make you happy. Because women don't come knowing what makes them happy. Make me happy. Make me happy. This is nature. This is nature. It's not saying what it should be. I'm trying to put you on the game. And look, real shit, you can wait till something hurt before you decide to listen. Before you decide to take it seriously. Because that's what most, most, most dudes do. They wait until they done had a baby and the girl going crazy. They wait until they a few years into a marriage and shit start to seem strange. And then they, they start to listen. It's fine. It's fine. I get it. There's a new game called Manalores, which I think is perfect allegory for this, but I haven't copped it yet. In what way is it a perfect allegory? What does it do? What's it um what's it about? Well yeah, practice and theory. Practice and theory. The theory, this is your life. This is your life. This is your life. No one's coming to help you with it. Motherfuckers gonna come have a piece of it and you gotta walk in them shoes. This is your life. You have to be your own mental point of origin. That's what I was trying to say. Mental point of origin. Yes, your own mental point of origin. The, the place from which you decide what you need to be doing. Where's the right way to go? The motherfuckers will say they're on your team, and it's equal. Talk is cheap. It's easy to say this, that, and the third. That's why everybody's on social media, TikTok, you know, 60 second video. It's easy to say anything. Even if everybody in the world say they're on your side, fuck that. You got to be on your side more than anyone else could even imagine being. Some people want people to care about them more than they care about themselves before they start to listen. That's a luxury. That's a luxury. You're a baron and you got to build a village and raiders come every now and then. So you have to you have you have to have defenses and levies. Because <laughs> the baron is the leader of that shit. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. You got to be the motherfucker who's the center, the center point of all that shit. You have to be that's happiness through husband. You, you have to be the farmer. You got to know what's coming, why it's coming and how to deal with it 
long before anybody even has to worry about it. It's natural. It's nature shit. And if you, especially if you're under 30, you got time to figure that out. You got time to figure that out. You want to be building a philosophy about your life. Why you do what you do. This is why it's part of the reason I did the Timeless Knowledge Store. Just listening to how they have the different analogies and metaphors to frame these ideas. And you get a whole pocket full of them. Now you got enough to start building something. And you keep expanding on it. Like, like I said, happiness through husbandry. Starts with a few analogies. And eventually there's an entire ecosystem of analogies to articulate the idea to yourself. So you can take new information you get and feed it back through the structure that you've created. Happiness through husbandry. You co- you learn to cultivate that happiness for yourself first. Then you start to plan how something else can come. Because look, the cow on your farm, they're going to get a little bit of happiness. They may not get all that they want, but if you gave them all they want, you wouldn't have none. They eat every single ounce of it. And then look at you like, why didn't you stop me? <laughs> I had to get played in front of everyone before I started listening instead of repeating. Ooh. Yep. Most dudes want to wait till they get hurt. I know. I know. They go wait till that shit hurt before they start listening. But I get it, though, because that's how life be sometimes. Sometimes shit don't hurt enough for you to really take that shit into consideration. It don't hurt enough for you to think that that's something that needs a bit of urgency. That's kind of what pain is for. I say, hey, we got something over here that needs your fucking attention. <laughs> But for real, man, by the time most dudes realize it, it's way too late to change something. And they got to go all the way back to the first principle, which is be willing to take an L. And if you don't, if you don't go out here and be willing to take an L, it's coming for you. It's watching all them little ways you try and avoid it. I see how you zigzagging right there. Oh, yeah. And it's going to get you. If you start from the premises that it's going to get you. You, you're already working in the right direction. But if you sit here trying to avoid it here, and mm, that's going to get you. It sees the zigzag. <laughs> First one, this is your life. That's the theory. The practice side, be righteously honest. Be righteously honest. This ain't honesty in a way where you're trying to defeat everybody. It's honesty in a way where, one, you're not cultivating a lie. Because you got to take care of a lie like a baby, like a little puppy. You got to take care of a lie. All right? You don't want to be starting to build shit on top of a lie. Because even if you put some good shit on top of that lie, you get you get an aim, a direct hit on that lie, everything's done. Everything's done. You're doing it for you. Not only just for the integrity of what you're doing, but so you don't have to keep taking care of a lie. So you don't you don't you're not in the practice of lying to yourself, being righteously honest. You're not self-editing. You're not editing what you was gonna say for somebody else's feelings. Because feelings don't give a fuck. Feelings will chew you the fuck out. <laughs> and you sitting here trying to trying to make sure the feelings is okay. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. You need to say what's on your mind. And, and with the righteousness, be looking for the honesty. Because if you're going to be bold enough to put your chest out and say what's on your mind, you need to listen what comes back. You need to listen to what comes back. And not just, I want to get my two cents in. You ever hear somebody tell a story and they don't even remember what the other person said, but here they go, and then I told them, da 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 that motherfucker wasn't worried about what the other person was listening was saying. They weren't looking for honesty. They were looking to try and get their one point. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Because, look, when you're right, motherfuckers going to come back around. Hey, man, you was right. I know I was right. That's why I said something. Oh, man, you all told you. I told you so type of nigga. Well, I did tell you so. I did. Be righteously honest. Because the righteousness, this is where your passion and your emotion can come in. When your foundation is already honesty, you don't have to fight to keep the foundation. The foundation already strong enough. What you have to fight is for your position to keep your feet on your square, to not fall away from the honesty, to appease somebody else, to think you're going to avoid somebody's negative reaction. Righteously honest. This is where your passion can come in. This is where your force, your push can come in. Because you got the honesty. You're not looking. You're always looking for the honesty. And you're not looking to try and cultivate a lie. So the energy you would have put into doing that bullshit, you can keep right there and be righteously honest. And move the way you're supposed to move for you. See, how you're supposed to be is what's right for you. How you're supposed to be is what's right for you. Because everybody else will get that message. Everybody else will get that message. Babies and children. 
Do what's right for you in this life. Women, take care of you, girl. Do what's right for you. Men, what do they tell you? Hey, make sure you uh, make sure you make other people happy. Make sure you provide for other people. Sacrifice your sacrifice yourself for the larger thing. Okay, okay. Look, you do what you want to. I tell you right now. But when it come to you, nobody else is coming to save you. No one else is coming to help. No one else is coming to care. Because some motherfuckers will care just because it's something they didn't get, and that's not really caring. That's that's. Uh, how do I say it? That's trying. That's trying to to heal your wound through somebody else. You want to take. You want to take the medicine for your own wound. All right. You want to take the medicine for your own wound. You gonna care for somebody? Care without without needing something to come back. That's when you really care. Care without needing them to be a certain way. Because you can't stop from you can't stop somebody from getting what they're supposed to get. Saving themselves through you. Yeah. Instead of focusing your attention on the fact that you got an illness, you got a, you got a wound, you look to somebody else who you can see yourself in and try and fix them. Mm mm. That ain't gonna work. Because look, that motherfucker probably gonna reject your shit, right? If you heal yourself and you start walking and that motherfucker gonna look, say, oh, why that motherfucker walk like that? That's how motherfuckers are. And you don't do the walk so that motherfuckers can look at you and be like, well, why, why they walk like that? Who, 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 who. You don't do it for them. You, look, I don't give a fuck if you cheer for me. I see what you motherfuckers cheer for. Give me a boo. I'll be okay. You motherfuckers gonna cheer for this? Nah, I don't even want to be in that category. It's fine. Motherfucker, you'll be doing this shit and no one will notice you. You won't even notice who notices you. You won't even notice who notices you. Mm-mm. Be righteously honest. Be honest in a way that's a part of life. It's authentic. Be comfortable with making people uncomfortable. Because really, it's not even you that's making them uncomfortable. It's their allegiance to bullshit that makes them uncomfortable. And just seeing you, how you move, what you say, what you're willing to do pushes up against the fact that they know they got a big, a deep allegiance to bullshit. An unnatural allegiance to bullshit. You don't want to have that for yourself. Why? Because this is your life. When you're a baby, when you're a woman in somebody else's little thing, you, you can have allegiance to bullshit. You got the space and safety and security. Well, you the one who's supposed to give that? Well, you the one who's responsible for the safety and security? You don't get that little layer of bullshit. And if you do keep it, it's going to fuck you up. Happiness through husbandry. When you are the farmer, you're responsible for the security of your happiness. Not because you're just innately the thing that provides, but if you want it to thrive, you have to be responsible for its security. You're not just going to find a little patch of happiness out there in the bush too often. Man, see, the philosophy gets layers on the analogies it has a structure so you have to start somewhere and it can't be we need to all just love each other because okay maybe that's true but motherfuckers ain't gonna do that no you're wrong about that okay look well examine the degree to which you love yourself not that first layer that everybody says oh of course i love myself Mm -mm, not that one that's what you present to everybody dig dig a little deeper than that what are the things you hate about yourself and why what are the things you wish you could change? What are the things you try and hide a little bit so nobody sees them when you're having a communication with somebody? Come on. It's because it's not it's not for me to be right. Okay, I'm wrong. That's cool. It happens. As a matter of fact, I it's more you ut- there's more utility in being wrong than this being right. Because if I'm right, then now I gotta deal with you being mad about it. If I'm wrong, I can take some of what you're saying and alter myself to where the next time around I hit it I'm right I can learn I can grow I can develop I don't grow and develop by being right well motherfuckers who's never right and desperately want it they don't understand that motherfuckers who never right and want it desperately and don't understand how it works they don't they don't get that they don't get the utility of being wrong there's a deep utility in it and then the utility in rejection they spend so much of their time avoiding wrong and avoiding rejection. They miss the whole. They miss the whole game. They miss the whole game. So yeah, one more time. Theory side. This is your life. 
This is your life. In the relationship game, what women barter is the time, is an opportunity to be in or with her body. In or with her body. That's what she has to offer. That's what she barters. For men, what you're bartering is a piece of your life your existence i'm not saying it should be another way i'm not saying it needs to be more fair i'm saying it's not but that's how it's supposed to be and i'm saying it's not so somebody should do something different i I want you not to undervalue yourself you know what a mark is like uh with with holes and stuff right or i think strippers do it too maybe or scammers do it a mark somebody who don't understand what's going on and you can take from them that's what you become. You become a mark. And it's not somebody's fault. It's not. It should have been another way. If you're a mark, you're a mark. If you're naive and gullible, you're naive and gullible. But you don't need to hide from that. You need to address it. You need to address it. And just doing that, bro, that puts you that puts you way ahead of most people in a, who live, who exist, bro. Being honest with yourself about the fact that you're gullible and naive puts you way ahead of most people. Because they don't even have to see that about themselves. the practice side be righteously honest be honest in a way where you're moving because your life is at stake not survival and scraping in fear but know what know what's at stake know what you're valuing when you're being honest because see someone who's being on who's being righteous from a lie what they're valuing is the integrity of their lie that takes a lot of energy you got to value the integrity of the lie and your life Mm -mm. put that aside because a lie gonna take up a lot of energy what you're about what you're arguing what you're moving being passionate about is the integrity of your life the one that only you gonna be having to walk (laughs) be simple right that's what that's what you're being righteous about and when you've moved on a foundation of honesty and you're constantly checking to make sure that's as honest as it can be you don't have to fight for it it's strong enough to take care of itself. And you can you can focus on the fact that you know what's at stake. Your life. You know what's at stake. So I don't think I don't think the world should be any any other kind of different way. I don't think the world should be it's perfect. It's perfect. What needs to change is you and how you address you, how you interact with you, how you move. And some motherfuckers, when you change, they're gonna be a little bumpy at first. They may even jump ship. But you probably didn't need them on the ship. You probably didn't. They were probably waiting for the opportunity to take the ship over. Like, look at all this motherfucking shit this motherfucker got. I can't wait till they start slipping. I'm going to catch them. Mm-hmm. You can't move based on your feelings. Or I think I'm in love. Okay, you think you're in love with her. Then, you know, she come, you show up at the door naked. And you think, oh, you just excited. And all of a sudden, Wheezy and his homies pop out. They they didn't rob you for everything because that was really Weezy's girl. You should have known, bro. She had the ringtone and everything. You can't move on your emotions. You can't be naive and gullible. Righteously honest. Righteously honest. And that takes being honest with yourself about yourself first. Being righteously honest ain't about getting out here and letting nobody know. You can be quiet as fuck. It's not about letting letting nobody else know. It's about you being honest with yourself. You being direct and clear as you can not editing what you say for somebody else's feelings or even your own feelings you want to see what is not what you'd like it to be what you think it should be or what it could be what it is because should would and could always got to fight what is is it, it, it is you don't have to defend it it's not going to change it is well well to the degree to which everything changes it'll change i guess but it, it's not it's 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 uh what's the word it's uh it's not foundational it's sturdy it's steadfast that's what i wanted to say it's steadfast fire emoji what's that (laughs) it's steadfast what is is steadfast what would should and could be that's all opinion speculation it could even be a good opinion it's still opinion would should and could be all opinion what is Learn to be looking for that, even beside what you want to believe. Because what you want to believe is like a little carrot on a stick. You're going to have you moving this way and that way based on what you want to believe because you ain't looking at what's in front of you. Definitely get caught trying to comfort myself a lot. Yeah, try to take the edge off of shit, right? Mm-mm. 
keep that edge on there. Keep that edge on there. Put a little cushion in there so, you know, it don't hurt as much when you hit the ground. Nah, hit the ground. That way you know what the ground is like. That way you know. Because you put that cushion on there, you never going to really know. You never know how far you can go unless you risk going too far. You never know how far you can go unless you risk going too far. So, I, mean, I, I really think this, this third principle is, is, is the simplest, but it takes a while for guys to, to really understand the gravity of it. This is your life. No one else is coming to live it. No one else can. And to be honest, no one else really cares about it until you're useful. Until you're useful. And that's not a bad thing. Until you're useful, nobody cares about it. They're going to try, you know, you'll be, you be useful for a while. And they want to try and downplay it, you know, try and abuse it a little bit. And really, that's how you know something is strong, because you can abuse it a little bit. You can push it. You can push its limits. That's how you know it's strong. So don't take it as an insult. That's how it's supposed to be. But just remember who do what. <laughs> okay, that's it for me on this one, y'all. I appreciate it. Watch the Timeless Knowledge Store.